Hi. Hey, how do I use PowerPoint? Do I do the arrow? Is that how you do it? I've never used PowerPoint until this weekend, so. <laughs> Space Force. Oh. Well, we'll get to him in a second, I guess. Oh, I don't want a laser thing. This bottom, bottom, bottom. I can send stuff to other planets, but I can't figure this out. Um, hi, my name is Jason. Thanks for all you that came early. And uh, uh, so I guess I just very briefly, the reason I'm talking to you about this subject, um, when I'm not running around the world uh, playing guitar, um, I, uh, I work as an independent consultant for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, this is sort of a new career turn uh, a couple of years ago. And um, I've been uh, an independent consultant working to evaluate and yeah, basically give advice when needed on a microphone that's going to land on Mars in the year 2021. Uh, it's one of two microphones that's going to be attached to the Mars 2020 rover, which it's very cleverly named, but will probably change. And um, uh, what was the, yes, so that's why I'm here. Um, and uh, what was I, oh, I was, yeah, pissed because the, the space, did you guys go to space camp? Who, who here went to space camp? Yeah, the, re the rest of us hate you. I saw that in the intro. I'm like, I, I had some friend who like rubbed that in my face all the time. Like, you know what, screw you, I get it. I didn't go to space camp. Um, okay, so uh, when I was a kid, another brief history, I was a member of two clubs, which I've never admitted publicly for the first, this is now. Um, one was the Weird Al Yankovic fan club. I, I'm really not making this up. And the, uh, the second was the Planetary Society. And okay, so is, how, are, are you guys, anybody here members of the Planetary Society? All right. So the Planetary Society was, um, well, it was started by this beautiful turtleneck-wearing genius, uh, Mr. Dr. Carl Sagan, and um, back in, I think, 1980, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm not very historically accurate for somebody who's presenting a history lecture. But anyway, um, in 1996, Dr. Sagan wrote a letter, and I'm going to read it to you because I don't want to screw it up, and uh, I'm going to... Part of that letter, he was the one who first publicly suggested the idea of capturing sound on the surface of Mars. And he wrote, quote, in part of this letter, uh, even if only for a few minutes, even if only a few minutes of Martian sounds are recorded from this first experiment, the public interest will be high and the opportunity for science, scientific exploration real. So that was 1996. That was sort of when this began. And then in, oh, I got slides now. They have the information I need. Let's try this. Okay, 1999, a couple years later, uh, the Planetary Society, as I understand it, I believe, uh, funded a microphone that was going to get sent with the Mars Polar Lander. And um, for those of you that know your satellite history, that didn't work out so well. The Polar Lander never landed. Uh, well, it did land. It landed rapidly. Uh -huh. That wasn't meant to be quite that funny, but <laughs> <laughs> rapidly at a, and at great expense. Uh, but uh, anyway, there was a microphone on it, which was presumably didn't record that either. Um, anyway, so, uh, and then I believe, I, this isn't on here, but I think it, about 2001, following the polar, or once they realized they were going to send a microphone to Mars, they actually, some other scientists got together and wrote this long report which actually we found very useful when we were doing our research, studying the atmospheric properties of Mars and how you would actually hear anything up there because it's only about 1% atmosphere, and, uh, but sound does travel. And then, so there's atmospheric properties of not only atmospheric pressure, but also uh, chemical properties, you know, because the gases are slightly different. So you get these weird EQ curves, which I won't bother you with right now, but basically it sounds better than you would think for having the same atmosphere that on Earth would be at about 100,000 feet, which, you know, if you're in a plane, you, you can't do very well at 100,000 feet. But sound does travel. And um, so that's, they wrote this long study. And in 2008, uh, the French, 
Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of the French uh, space agency. Anybody want to try? That should be one of the trivia questions. Um, anyway, they took up, sort of took up the mantle of uh, getting sound recorded on Mars, and uh, they have been involved, uh, I believe the French agency was involved in the Phoenix Lander. Um, well, anyway, what happened is the Phoenix Lander did land successfully on the surface, and there was a microphone on it, but it never actually got turned on. Yeah. <laughs> I wish this had an off switch so I could make that really dramatic. Um, and uh, there was some technical details due to how the microphone, as I understand it, I'm kind of riffing this, but I think it was how it was configured to the main computer in a, such a way that uh, there, was, there was concern. Nothing actually went wrong, but there was concern that activating it might like, do a hard reset on the computer or something. Some, something very undesirable for a very far away instrument. Um, so anyway, it never got activated. So now, fast forward, we've had these attempts to record sound on the surface. None of them have succeeded, and Curiosity just didn't fly with a microphone. Um, but 2020 is going to. And uh, what do I got here? Oh, OK. Yeah, more slides. Did these all today, so thank you for bearing with me. Thank you, by the way, to Rebecca Larson, who not only got me on this event, but also helped me with the slides today and taught me PowerPoint. So she's right there. <laughs> a brilliant astrophysicist in her own right who has given many talks and she's amazing. All right, Mars 2020 microphone. So Mars 2020 is, are you guys, everybody here is familiar with Curiosity, right? Okay, well, if you're not, it looks like that. Um, 2020 was basically NASA trying to be smart about their money, so they wanted to, uh, they wouldn't use the, the word recycle, but, you know, use as much of the design of Curiosity that they knew worked, including the crazy sky crane landing maneuver, which have you guys seen the video for that? It's nuts. If you haven't, Google sky crane or YouTube. It's, nobody's ever seen it is the point. It's only been seen in computer renderings and you can't test it without, you know, Earth, you can't test it in Earth gravity because of all the crazy stuff that happens with it. So it's only been seen in computer animations, but this one's gonna land the same way. It's gonna be a crazy landing. And there's two microphones on this uh, machine here. The one at the top there, the little blue circle, that's SuperCam. That is the one, that is sort of the legacy technology that has come up from the Planetary Society for the last uh, 23 years, is that right? Is that math? Um, and I have a picture of it, uh, I think, maybe. Okay, so that's the SuperCam instrument on top. And uh, bottom left, that little tube sticking out, which you can see bottom right, for that's a quarter right next to it. That's an electric, uh, electric microphone. Excuse me. And um, that's essentially a developed, you know, it's a, they've been, that's a, essentially the technology that they've been putting forward for quite a while now. And a lot of studies have been done on this microphone. And... Uh, they seem fairly confident that it will work pretty well. This is not the one I'm working on, so I don't know as much about it. But um, if we go back, how do you go back? Do you push the second button? There we go. I'm learning things here. So you see now sort of down to the right, there's another circle. Um, it's kind of like above where a hubcap would be if this thing had hubcaps. Do you guys see it there? Okay, so that's where the microphone that I'm working on is going to be. That's uh, part of what's called the... Is uh, entry, Descent, and Landing System, EDL system. So when this thing comes down uh, in February 19th, 2021, is that right? Anybody else know? Oh, God, I guess I'm the expert. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, when this thing lands, you know those, uh, was it the seven minutes of sorrow, or what do they call it, the 67 seven minutes of death, terror? Yeah. During that... Uh, they're going to be, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're going to be, uh, when it gets into the final, I think, three to five minutes of descent, they were gonna, this thing's going to be loaded with video cameras on the rover, on the, the top part, that, you know, the sky crane section, and they're going to be recording all this. Um, none of those cameras have a microphone on them, however, and they wanted audio. So that's where I came in, and basically we've been working together to try and find a good audio solution that would capture decent sound, 
have a high dynamic range to be able to hear the sound of the rockets firing and hopefully if it doesn't get you know destroyed during the landing process or explode from the pressure variance, um, continue to work and operate on the Martian surface throughout the lifetime of the rover. Um, the microphone that we're using is, um, it's a more high fidelity microphone, so it could technically sound quite good, but it's also not something, it's meant to be used in like a sterile studio recording environment, um, not the surface of a desert planet after flying next to a nuke for six months in deep space. <laughs> so, uh, and there's, there won't be much, if any, customization to it. It's, uh, this is what's called a technology demonstration. So the way NASA works, <laughs> very briefly, <laughs> it's, uh, there are mission critical things. There's various levels of importance on a mission. And uh, technology demonstration means if this doesn't work, we really don't care. We'd like for it to work. It'd be great if it worked. But if it doesn't work, it will not hamper or affect anything like, if that microphone doesn't work, everything else on this thing works great. And um, so, uh, because of that, you don't, you know, it's a little harder to labor for, you know, funds to get this thing going. But we're very excited it's going to be there at all, and it may work well. Um, it's a little hard to predict how Marsh. Uh, the main concern, I think, is going to be the dust particles flying around everywhere. That's, I mean, you, you take great steps in a recording studio to make sure your microphones don't get dusty. And uh, that's what I normally do for a living, is take care of microphones. And now I'm sending one to a really horrible place. So uh, let's see here. What do we got next? Um, oh, yeah, lots of words. OK, well, um, this basically just says everything I just told you. <laughs> I put it here in case I forgot. But there it is. So we can basically skip this. Um, yeah, that's everything we just said. Okay, what's next here? Oh, okay, so uh, wait, wait, I have a few more minutes. Am I okay? Okay, a little bit. All right, we're going to do this quickly. So I put together in, there is, uh, because there's two microphones on this thing, what do you, okay, when you have one microphone, you have mono sound, right? It's just right, AM radio, 1950s. Um, but if you have two microphones, you have stereo, or the possibility of stereo. Even if they are completely different designs, you have that possibility. And so uh, last year I went to, I attended a planetary science convention in Berlin and I put forward a proposal that would basically, if possible, and if money and management allowed, would, uh, and, and if they worked, would allow for the SuperCam microphone and the EDL microphone to basically be turned on at the same time in connection with one of the video camera units so that you could have video from the surface of Mars in with stereo sound, which I think would be really cool. Which is kind of, other, other people do this for better reasons, but I, I do this because it's cool. Um, so to try and, you guys get that, and a lot of the public gets that, but it's hard to get people to give you a lot of money for that. Uh, so I put together this little video, which was part of that demonstration, and I don't know if this, Stereo sound is going to project. You should also know this is like way overdone. I used really bad Foley and things like that. But what I did do is I tried to, e I did actually equalize the audio you're going to hear according to the parameters that we had when we put microphones in a vacuum chamber at JPL. So it should actually sound, I mean, it'll probably be much quieter, obviously, <laughs> than this, but it's, it doesn't sound all that bad. Do I have to push play or is it going to play? It's going to play. Okay, so... This is just sort of shows you the difference between seeing video with nothing on it and then the effect it will give you when you get sound. And now it'll be louder. So these are video sequences. These are choppy. The video for me, 2020 is going to be smooth video. This is sort of still frame stuff that's been put together. This one's particularly cool because you'll be able to hear the wheels crackling on the surface. This is definitely something you'll be able to hear on the surface. Maybe not quite as bassy, but uh, this one's a bit of a stretch, but just go with me on it. We got one more here. So this is something I, I 
didn't know about until I was doing this research, but sand dunes in certain parts of the world will resonate a low frequency as the wind blows the sand across them. It's um, kind of a very, not very well, you hear that low hum? That's actually the sound of sand coming down these, these sand dunes. So this is, you never know, but this is something that might possibly be heard if you get close enough to one of these things. Anyway, that's it. Um, so, <laughs> I'm not going to even tell you where I got the wind sound from. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to wrap this up real quick um, by saying sort of, I mean, I don't need to explain to you guys what's the point of this because it's just cool and we all get that. But uh, as far as what the future of this, what this might lead to, um, one of the things, yeah, exactly. Uh, another idea that I'd put forward that I think will be realized in time, either by myself or someone else, is that eventually we're going to have people working on the surface of the planet and they're going to be wearing spacesuits and walking around. And I don't know if you, any of you guys ride ATVs or you do anything where you wear helmets and you, you get, you're really blocked out by your surroundings. You know, you're sort of like, like scuba diving or something, you're in a bubble. Um, there's the capability for people working on the surface of Mars to be able to hear their environment and be able to hear when they're drilling and hear their footsteps and if a rock is falling on them or, you know, Marvin the Martian is trying to shoot at them. And I think this would actually be a very useful thing for a lot of reasons. And so this is what we're hoping and eventually uh, audio will be uh, incorporated into people working and living on the surface of the planet in the next, I don't know, 100 years, something like that. And so anyway, fancy rendering. And uh, just leave you with this final thought. This guy may not be able to drink that beer, but he'll hear it crack open. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We have some Q&A now. Oh, <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> um, all right, so how this works. Um, is that uh, if you have a question, raise your hand. Uh, one of us will call on you. Hopefully, one of us will remember to repeat the question, and then he will answer. Hopefully, one of us will have an answer. I do not think this mic is working. All right. You want this uh, guy? We'll start with, uh, is that Brandon? Yes, we'll start with Brandon. Where'd you get the wind sound? <laughs> Twister. <laughs> I was afraid you'd ask. <laughs> I'm not the person to ask that question to, but that's a good question. Uh, I wouldn't say the possibility is high. I, I think that the possibility is good they're going to work. I mean, we're doing everything we can to see that they work. It's just, honestly, it's a matter of budget. And this is, and I, I, I mean this in the most respectful way possible, I really do. This is definitely the lowest priority on a mission that cost, you know, $2 billion. Um, and uh, we, we are doing everything we can to, you know, um, you know, make them survive. You know, we've we've done extensive studies to recommend what we think would be the best option. It's it, it at, th at this point, it's really a matter of money. The I, I mean, the studies we've done, we could yeah, we could we could send something up there with a higher confidence, but it would be er, uh, orders of magnitude more expensive, and it wouldn't happen. I mean, it wouldn't happen now. It would happen eventually, but in order for it to happen now. Uh, and again, we are very grateful it is happening. That's that's basically why. All right, there was another one in the back. Yeah. Uh, what type of microphone, condenser, dynamic, and what polar pattern? Condenser is what's going to fly. It's a measurement style microphone. It's Omni. Um, I don't want to say the name of the company only because it may change or something. But it's a it's a common studio refer. It's a studio reference mic. That's the one we're going to use. Um, and the way it works actually is it's a, the capsule itself will be on the outside of the mic. The preamp section will be on the inside. The capsule is about the size of my thumb or probably your thumbs too. <laughs> um, we considered everything. I mean, some things got, you know, ribbon mics got ruled out really fast. Um, SM57 got ruled out mainly because it was too big, not even because <laughs> it would probably survive. Um, but, uh, that's for the EDL mic. The Supercam mic, I believe is an electorate. I think it's sort of more like what you would have in like a hearing aid mic, you know, something like that. Um, and they have, I believe that's also Omni. They have, you know, pretty different equalization uh, curves. 
and they're made of different materials. The diaphragms are made of different materials. And so I'm actually, one of the things that's cool about this is because they're entirely different architectures, we get to see how they perform. One might work better than the other, one might last longer than the other, and those might be not the same thing either. So um, I think I answer your question, yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, it sucks, um, but not as much as you'd think. I, it basically, I mean, the biggest problem is that about, bef I don't know how many of you guys are, know your audio, uh, below or above about 10,000 hertz, everything pretty much dies immediately. Um, but 10,000 hertz is, is pretty high up. I mean, that's like the high crispy detail level of your hearing range. Just to give you guys a reference, our, our like, the median of our speaking voice is around a thousand hertz, and a hertz is how many times a second you get a vibration, right? So a thousand vibrations a second is roughly your what we call mid-range. Um, so things above ten thousand hertz, everything pretty much goes away. So you get a slight muffly character to it, but not too bad. Um, and that's what I did in those audio examples I showed you guys. Everything about ten thousand hertz was rolled off. And then you get like a weird bump, actually. And I, I didn't bring these graphs. And, um, but there's, uh, there's, if you really, actually, if you want to, I can obviously, after the, anybody who wants the technical stuff, I can talk to you afterwards. Um, but there, you get sort of a weird, like you get a bump in the high end uh, around, I think, seven, five to 10,000 hertz. You actually get like a little boost in frequency. And I believe that's due to the molecular composition of the atmosphere, if I remember right. Um, but generally speaking, it just falls off really quickly. So within maybe around the sort of immediate vicinity of the rover, it'll sound pretty decent. But like if you were over there talking, it would it would pretty much disappear. Um, is that the answer? Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right. Last <laughs> question. We'll do last question here. Yeah, mo mostly it's going to be wind noise and rocket thrusters. Yeah. Um, I actually highly, highly encourage you guys. I didn't even know this was existed until, and I'll, I'll leave you with this thought, but um, there is uh, on the, this, a lot of the craft we've sent into space. I mean, you see those cameras, right? Like this sort of are sticking down the length of the rocket, right? On like the Falcon 9 launches and everything. There, the space shuttle had cameras with audio on the boosters. And the boosters separate, and there's this incredible, you can, this stuff's all on YouTube. I just found this the other day. And the audio, they actually had, they sent the audio to Skywalker Sound, and Ben Burt, the same guy who did all the lightsaber sounds and everything, uh, processed this audio. He didn't, nothing is fabricated. He, they just brought it out and made it clearer so you could hear it. Uh, and you hear the, like, the tanks rattling and creaking as it's flying, you know, along with the rumbling of the engines. And then... You hear the crack of the separation, and as it falls away, you see the shuttle rocket away for a moment as it falls out of frame, and you can sort of hear the stresses of the metal and stuff like that. So that's kind of what we expect during the landing sequence, I imagine. You know, it's just, I mean, the rockets are, the landing rockets are pretty close to where the microphone is mounted. Hopefully, we'll hear it touch down. What I, the great hope, obviously, is that it will last and continue to work once the rover runs on the surface, so... But that's, yeah, basically what you'll get. Now, Jason, you are a professional musician, um, which is... Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, um, which is something that maybe a lot of us had fantasized about being as a kid. Um, so we asked all our speakers what you wanted to be when you were growing up. Um, and you actually answered astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> so what it's is true. it like having the best of all worlds, I guess? Well, I'm still trying to get paid more. <laughs> Uh, no, this, uh, I mean, it, you know, all right, without getting too, too much, uh, the, the reason I'm interested in this stuff is because it really, truly was a dream of mine when I was a kid. I, I wanted to be, I loved space when I was the age of five, and I loved music from before I could speak. And um, to be able to do both these things professionally, and, and this is all sort of a new thing for me. Um, to be able to combine these two things, yeah, it's it really is a dream come true, and I don't know, it's it's pretty cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> With that, let's give another round of applause to Jason. Yeah.